everybody. Welcome to Around Kansas. I'm Deb Goodrich. And I'm Michelle Martin. It's great to have you with us this morning. Wildlife Wednesday. And of course, wildlife uh, in Kansas is pretty broad. We've got uh, hunting and fishing, and we've also got fossils. So I like to refer to that as the wildlife of a bygone era. So Kansas is famous for its fossils. When my granddaughter was going through the Natural History Museum in New York City, when she lived in Brooklyn, I told her to look for Kansas fossils. And she's like, whatever, Grandmama. And then she called me from the museum and she's like, oh my gosh, I know where they found this one. I, I've been there. So it's, uh, we sent fossils all over the world. And we've got some incredible fossil hunters from Kansas and some really incredible stories. So many of the fossils were found in the places that are behind Michelle and me. So Michelle, tell them about your background. This photograph is one of my favorites. Uh, when I lived in Kansas and I was traveling and working on the book, Kansas Sports and Bases with Deb, I went all over looking for historic sites and I could not be in uh, Western Kansas without stopping at Monument Rock, but also at Chimney Rock. And so here behind me, I've got Chimney Rock. Um, I was really glad that I had a vehicle that had a little higher ground clearance because the one little two track road you can take to get out to the uh, rocks is a little rough. And if you have a regular passenger car, you're gonna find yourself stuck in needing a tow truck real quick. And so this was out at uh, Castle Rock and it was a very sunshiny and hot day, but it was a wonderful experience. As a matter of fact, I was the only person out there, probably because it was extremely hot that particular summer in Kansas, we had been going through an extreme heat wave and I have a portable weather station that I would take with my vehicle. And when I was out that afternoon, it reached 115 degrees. Oh Hence the reason goodness. I was the only one out there. But it was wonderful yeah. because I had, I had the place all to myself to walk and explore and to photograph and to sit and to think about how this was the bottom of the inland ocean, that inland sea that Kansas was once a part of. And uh, when I was out there, I actually got cell phone signal and I called my family and my young nephew, all he wanted to know was, would I find a tooth from a megalodon? And if I did, would I bring it home for him? So did you find a megalodon tooth, Michelle? No, no, I did not. Um, I think those have probably all been excavated by now. Uh, but I did make sure when I was on that trip, I did stop uh, at the Sternberg and I was able to go ahead and pick up a fossilized shark tooth uh, in the museum gift shop for him. So I sent him a shark tooth. Yeah. And for the longest time, he actually thought that his Auntie M, uh, as he calls me, that Auntie M found him a shark tooth. So now if my nephew's watching, he knows I bought it in the gift shop. Oh, got it. Well, my background is also Castle Rock, and I love this image. I did not take this picture, and I hope I'm getting the, the name right. The last name is Dentler, and I think it's Casey. Casey uh, or, or Dentler, if that's not right, uh, I'll correct it, I promise, on our Facebook page. But this image is incredible, and I'm always looking for images to share on our Facebook page. So um, I changed the cover photo um, every day or so because there's so many incredible pictures all around Kansas. So um, I'm just thrilled to share this one. It's just gorgeous. So of course you can look for fossils like Michelle did out on the um, ground where they're found or you can go to the gift shops and just pick up those fossils. That's a, that's a great idea. We've got so many museums that have wonderful exhibits on fossils and of course I'm the um, Garvey, Texas historian in residence at the Fort Wallace Museum. And we've got that incredible plesiosaur. And that is a casting. That plesiosaur was discovered near the um, ghost town of Sheridan in Logan County in 1867. And the original went to Philadelphia and it's still there. 
So they also, though, at the Drexel um, Academy of Natural Scientists in Philadelphia, have a casting of that same beast hanging in their entryway. So that is pretty doggone cool. So while I was there, not only did I get a photo with the, uh, um, the plesiosaur in the entryway, but with the real fossil that is upstairs in the vault. It is disarticulated, I think is the right word. And it is uh, an amazing, amazing find. But there are just so many places. And I know, uh, Michelle, you really love the Sternberg, which is, oh my goodness, yeah. what, a, what an incredible, what an incredible treasure we have in the Sternberg. Yeah, the, the Sternberg um, was one of the first natural history museums in Kansas I visited. When I moved to Kansas in 1997 and I began taking day trips on my own and I was living in Pittsburgh at the time and I took long, long day trips and weekend trips and absolutely fell in love with the museum. The only part about the museum that does bother me a bit is, are the snakes. As a matter <laughs> yeah. of fact, that really scares the only two things that really scare me in Kansas are the snakes and bison not because I don't like bison but because I've had some up close and personal encounters with bison that I didn't count on so but uh, not the Sternberg minus the snakes I absolutely love the museum they do a fantastic job sharing just the vastness of Kansas's natural history with their visitors and they've got a great education department. I know they do so many wonderful school programs. Uh, Deb, our good friend Ian is uh, the education director there and he does a phenomenal job. As a matter of fact, folks, during the pandemic, uh, a lot of museums were doing um, programs uh, for you through Facebook and other mediums and the Sternberg did a fantastic job um, as a matter of fact, our friend Ian did many videos from home uh, to show how he was working from home or uh, when he was in the museum. He was taking visitors on these great virtual tours. He was talking about specific fossils, particular um, animals that they had at the museum and talking about the work they do to um, explore and record and share Kansas's natural history. So if you've not been to the Sternberg, you really, really need to put that on your list of places. Now that things are opening up, go visit them. Folks, our museums need us now more than ever. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, the, pan the pandemic was very hard on our museums. And so they really need um, our, our entry fees that we pay. They need extra donations or they need those great uh, sales in the gift shop and folks let's just face it Deb and I have never met a museum gift shop gift shop that we didn't like and that we did not shop in true true so true mm -hmm. um big shopping bags so yeah the Sternberg is uh is just such a treasure and again it's one of those family friendly places where I don't care how tiny the kids are they will love it and I don't care how old the grandparents are. There's something for everybody. And let's face it, fossils bring out the kid and everybody. Um, so they all become kids when they walk in the door, no matter what the age. And it's it's just an amazing museum. And of course, I live here in Oakley. So of course the Fick Fossil Museum is just a couple of blocks away. And it has some amazing fossils. It's just incredible. And if you are um, in our area, then check out the Keystone Gallery, which is just a few miles south of Oakley. And uh, Chuck and Barbara down there um, are treasure troves. They're absolute treasure troves of, of knowledge and history. And they've got wonderful examples in the shop and they can tell you all about them. Chuck's dad was a fossil hunter of some renown. And so he grew up in the business and it's just a, a wonderful, wonderful site. Um, I think we need to take a break just a second and hear from a, a couple of sponsors, especially Mittens, Mittens Western Wildlife Travel Center right here at the uh, 
um, interstate um, at Oakley. It is exit number 76. And if you're going to go explore at Monument Rocks, Monument Rocks or Little Jerusalem or the FIC or um, the Keystone or go on down to uh, Scott City, um, we'll talk about those sites in just a minute. But um, stop in there and, and tell them Deb and Michelle sent you and uh, they'll treat you right. We'll be right back. Welcome to the Western Kansas Wildlife Travel Center right here in my hometown of Oakley, Kansas. We're the front door of Western Kansas located on three main highways, I-70, US-83, and US-40. And all those roads lead to history, beautiful scenery, and adventure no matter which direction you go. We now have an IHOP. That brand that you've trusted up and down the road in all your travels is staffed with local folks, real people, just like you and me, and we're waiting on you to join us. So for fun, adventure, fuel up, fuel your body, and let's have some fun. Looks like it's time for our tour. Welcome to the Fort Wallace Museum. Here at the museum you're going to find some really interesting stuff like our replica stagecoach from the Butterfield Overland Dispatch. We've got facades from the fort buildings. We've got an 1870s flag. There's a plesiosaur that was discovered locally. We've got the Ray Pump Organ Collection. We're a little bit place with a great big story and we'd love to have you. Welcome back. Like I said, once you get off the highway at Mittens and you head south on the, on the highway there, you're going to pass an incredible buffalo herd along the way. And uh, like Michelle said, she's had a couple of close encounters of the bison kind. And um, they are to be respected. And, um, you know, keep talk about social distancing. Yeah, this yeah. is a perfect place to practice your social distancing. Don't get too yeah. close but watching them is so interesting. Scott City has an incredible museum. Um, the uh, El Cartalejo Gallery and Jerry Thomas uh, Gallery. Um, El Cartalejo is, uh, the ruins are located around Scott, historic Scott Lake. And that is, it's like people are always saying, this doesn't look like Kansas. and. It's like I was telling a friend the other day, after a while, you realize all this stuff does look, this is what Kansas looks like. And Scott Lake will blow you away. But the El Cuartalejo ruins are the northernmost ruins of that uh, were inhabited by Pueblo peoples. So it is fascinating. And there is a project underway to uh, protect those ruins and preserve them even better than they are. So that's pretty awesome. And then you've got an incredible landscape around there. So um, yeah, so that's one place you've got to visit. And again, these are great family sites because you can, you can enjoy being there on the lake. You can, you can walk. There's so many little trails that you can walk around. There's um, the battle site there, Battle Canyon, um, which is spectacular just incredible scenery. So uh, just a great place for the family. And then in season, you've got the little store there on, on the lake where you can go in and get ice cream or pop or, you know, a bag of ice or whatever you need and, and picnic. And so it's just an awesome family site. And, you know, speaking of family, Deb, um, the stories that we hear about fossils and fossil hunting and these creatures of a bygone era in Kansas history are the, are the stuff of not only legend, but also books. Mm -hmm. And we would be remiss if we did not mention our good friend, Marla Matkin. Many of you, if you have been to Fort Larned or many other historic sites here in Kansas during a living history weekend, you've probably met Marla. Marla is best known for portraying the wife of uh, George Armstrong Custer, the one and only Libby Custer. But Marla is also an educator and an author. And she is currently working on a book called A Dragon's Tale. 
And it is the story of the discovery of the plesiosaur uh, that Deb saw the actual uh, disarticulated or disassembled plesiosaur in Philadelphia. And of course, at the Fort Wallace Museum, we have the casting that hangs from the ceiling and it's positioned and located right near the post hospital display and the life figure of Captain Theophilus Turner, who Deb and I both agree we probably would have fought over him in real life because not only was he one handsome fellow, he was also a very learned and articulate man. He was a physician, uh, he was a captain in the US Army, he was stationed at Fort Wallace and he is the one who went out uh, and actually uncovered and unearthed the plesiosaur. And so Marla's book is a great way to bring the story of fossil hunting and connect it with kids. Uh, her book is great. She, she imagines if there was a little boy who was living at the fort, perhaps a little boy might've gone along on the adventure looking for the plesiosaur. And uh, in his dreams at night, he probably dreamed of dragons and slaying dragons like King Arthur and his knights. And so her book is gonna bring that to life for uh, youngsters, for young readers. And uh, for those who don't know, she also has another book uh, called Custer's Mouse, which fits right in with wildlife. Uh, George Armstrong <laughs> Custer and a pet mouse. And what is the life of the pet mouse? So based, you know, there's, based on a true story because Custer really had a pet mouse. And so, I mean, Seriously, folks, Deb and I are constantly saying to one another when we find historical uh, materials, you can't make this negative. History, can, uh, history writes better scripts than Hollywood could ever dream of. Uh, you know, to think of George Armstrong Custer having a pet mouse. But so, you know, so that's the amazing thing about some of our wildlife in Kansas is how great it is for families to be able to explore. And when I'm at the museum in Fort Wallace, I love seeing children walk through. And when they walk into the, ga to the gallery and they look up and they see the casting of the plesiosaur hanging from the ceiling, uh, literally their mouths drop open, their eyes really? get wide yeah. and they really become engaged with it. And then they're able to look at the displays of fossils and other items that are there in that uh, part of the museum. And it's really great for them. So definitely, if you're out and about in Western Kansas, stop by, stop by Fort Wallace, uh, meet, get up close and personal with Foss Dragon, as we like to call the plesiosaur. And also, Folks, if you have not seen Deb's documentary, Thoth's Dragon, you definitely need to see Thoth's Dragon. It brings that whole story of the discovery of uh, the plesiosaur to life. And it, it was a wonderful community effort, again, showing how uh, you bring so many people together from different walks of life to bring this history back to life. Absolutely. And uh, it really was a community effort. Uh, Brenda Trofe, who teaches at uh, Sharon Springs at the high school there, uh, was the videographer and, and editor and did a phenomenal job, but we had so many local people involved. It was really wonderful. Some of the scenes were uh, actually filmed um, on location and some were filmed at the Butterfield Trail Museum in Russell Springs. And Russell Springs will be opening, they open seasonally. So I think they open Memorial Day weekend and run through Labor Day weekend, but they've got some great fossils too, not to mention some other incredible history. And it's just, <coughs> excuse me, little out of the way place between um, Oakley and Wallace that used to be the, um, the county seat. And uh, so the museum is actually the old county courthouse it's beautifully situated above the Smoky Hill River, and it's just absolutely gorgeous, and the nicest people ever run it. So put that on your list, too, to, to stop by the, the Russell Springs um, Museum, the Butterfield Trail Museum at Russell Springs. So, yeah, you know, Deb, I know we could talk for hours about the wildlife, and in particular the fossils in Kansas, and I'm always amazed every time I'm able to come back to Kansas, to come home to visit and to see folks. 
um, I'm able to find a new museum, a new place to visit, uh, something that I haven't seen before. And what it shows me is the depth of Kansas history. Oh, and sure. the, the lengths that Kansans go to to preserve the history, whether it's the history of our wildlife from fossils um, and, and more. I mean, in, in, in Lawrence at the museum at, at KU, you have you know, Comanche. The, uh, ho the horse survivor of the Little Bighorn. I mean, Kansans care so much about not only their history, but the land and all of the creatures who walk, run, and roam it. And that is something that's really amazing. Speaking of fossils, uh, you just mentioned the Dyke Museum at KU. Oh my goodness, that is incredible. Mm -hmm. And talk about a great place to take the family. Um, it is, uh, you know, the panorama of the of the taxidermied animals is pretty awesome. Mm -hmm. But again, it's a great teaching museum, and there's just so much to it. Um, just an incredible stop. The kids, I have to say, that's one of their favorite places I've ever taken them. And you could go back again and again and never see it all. It's just a, a fabulous museum. And then you have the added benefit when you're there in Lawrence, of course, you can take advantage of the amazing history of Lawrence itself, uh, the role that it played in the Kansas territorial period and during the Civil War. Um, what a phenomenal place to be able to not only see that natural history of Kansas, but the people history as well. Uh, the Watkins Museum downtown uh, oh, yeah. in downtown Lawrence also has fantastic, fantastic array of artifacts related to the history of Lawrence and of the county. Uh, it is definitely one not to be missed. And uh, I just, I cannot, um, I cannot express my my deep and abiding love for Lawrence strong enough. Um, as a and matter of fact, be, I'm sorry, go ahead. So, you know, when you're there, um, you've got that great, you've got a cosmopolitan feel, but it's not overly crowded. It's a college town. It's got a wonderful feel. It's got that young feel, but also family feel to it. Um, you're right there located off the interstate. So it's easy to get to. Um, and you know, if you go down, if you go to the Dyke Museum, uh, make sure you go down on Mass Avenue, go down Mass and visit the shops, visit the restaurants. Um, Deb and I were partial to the Mad Greek and Free State Brewing. Uh, some of the best food you will ever eat in Lawrence. And if you're in Lawrence, you might as well go by Lecompton and see our friends in Lecompton because it's just a few miles down the road and you've got two great museums there and shops and Aunt Netter's Cafe and you've got uh, the beautiful view looking out over the Caw River there at the old Democratic headquarters and um, tell Tim Ruiz and Paul Bonmeyer and all the other folks there that that Michelle and Deb sent you over and they will show you a good time. You know, and it's interesting, Deb, because, you know, hearing the Caw River, it reminds me of some of the anecdotes and the newspaper articles and the letters from the territorial period uh, that talk about the wide range of Kansas wildlife and in particular, of course, yeah. my least favorite snakes and uh, the letters and the articles where they talk about seeing the head of a black snake appear in, in, the, in the Caw River. And that by the time the head of the snake reached the opposite bank, its tail was still on the other side to show the size and magnitude of the snakes in Kansas. Uh, the tail may be somewhat apocryphal, maybe a little bit exaggerated, but the idea was very clear to anybody coming to settle in Kansas it was going to be um, an experience, especially for those who had lived in cities. Uh, you were going to be living in the, you know, you were going to be kind of carving your existence out of the wilderness and that wilderness would become a part of your life. Snakes, buffaloes, or, prairie or, fires. Poor, poor Julia Lovejoy's um, snake stories. Oh my goodness. You know, copperheads hanging out of the cupboard over her baby's bed and then her little girl got got bitten by a copperhead in the garden. And then the neighbor got uh, bit by a rattlesnake while in her bed with her babies in the bed with her. And the snake bit her 
um, on the chin and her neck swelled and oh my god yeah we could tell snake stories all day long yes too. we could we could and uh when and maybe we will one day <laughs> yeah definitely yeah um but you know so really i mean when i was researching uh, my first book the prairie table cookbook with bill curtis um, I was going through women's diaries and their letters about their time in Kansas uh, in the 19th century. And more often than not, um, they talked about herds of animals getting loose and running them up, whether it be cattle, horses, sometimes they talked about bison. And the other thing that was mentioned the most uh, were extremely large, unattractive fish <laughs> and snakes. Um, yep. For me, the worst was, you know, hearing the women talk about having um, and living in some of the Saudis and the rattlesnakes dropping down out of the roofs of the Saudis onto the dinner table and family scattering pell-mell in the small house to get away from the very angry snake that was now on their table. Um, and so, yeah, I, as much as I love the 19th century and I love hearing and I love reading about these things, I'm glad I live in the 20th and 21st centuries yeah. where I don't have to experience that up close and personal with uh, wildlife of the snake kind. We're not sweeping them out of the house anyway. That's a, that's the good news. Exactly. So, well, I think uh, that's it for our wildlife segment today. And again, uh, thank Mittens for sponsoring us and uh um, make sure you stop by there, you know, and right next, I, uh, speaking of uh, semi-wildlife, um, Mittens and uh, Sonic are there side by side just off the highway, and they have a little dog run enclosed there. So if you're traveling with your pets, that's a great place. They've got a little playground and a great place to get the dogs out and let them exercise a little bit and get out of the car and um, let the kids uh, stretch on the playground too. So it's, it really does have everything. And now they've got um, like an urgent care there at Mittens. How cool is that? So if, you know, something happens along the road and you're, uh, you know, too far from home to, to go to your doctor, you've got the urgent care right there. So they really do have everything you need now. The IHOP, the urgent care, the playground, the, the uh, subway, you know, fuel, everything. They've got it all. Mittens has it all. If it's not it's at all. Mittens, you don't need it. You don't need it. That's right. That's exactly right. Well, we've we've uh, really enjoyed being with you today and make sure you join us. Um, like I said, Wednesdays are Wildlife Day. So the wildlife segments will be uploaded on Wednesdays, but you can watch anytime you want. And I'm Michelle. I'm Deb. And we'll see you somewhere around, around Sam. Thanks, everybody. Okay, looks like it's time for our tour. Welcome to the Fort Wallace Museum. Here at the museum, you're going to find some really interesting stuff, like our replica stagecoach from the Butterfield Overland Dispatch. We've got facades from the fort buildings. We've got an 1870s flag. There's a plesiosaur that was discovered locally. We've got the Ray Pump Organ Collection. We're a little bit place with a great big story and we'd love to have you. In 1821, a trade route was opened from Missouri in the United States across prairies and mountains to Mexico. In 2021, we will mark 200 years of epic conflicts and grand adventures, larger than life personalities and sweeping landscapes. Join us on an historic journey. The Santa Fe Trail lives on. Find us on social media or santafetrail.org.